All right. What's going on, YouTube friends and family? Back today for some more, I guess, financial. So I guess financial talk, you know, some advice, I guess, maybe. Um, today we're talking about car notes. Now, I generally buy cars that need a little work and I fix them up. You know, that's, that's what I do. I work on cars, motorbikes, mini bikes, anything that I got a motor, ATVs. That's what I do. I try my hand at everything. And I've got a lot of DMs and a lot of messages about what's a good car to buy, um, you know, what's a good car to go to the dealership and get, uh, you know, should I get a car? No, you know, blind, blind, blind. Now, I, now, I've learned my lesson as far as finances and car notes go because I myself have had quite a few car notes in my life. I still have a car note. So my advice is from my personal experience with car notes and what I've learned financially as I've matured, I guess, so to speak. Now, me personally, what I would tell any young buyer coming up, especially if you wanna eventually one day own a home, own property, own real estate, I would have to tell you to stay away from car notes. I didn't listen to this advice and I'm dreading it now. I'm paying for it to today. Stay away from car notes. If you can, buy a car straight cash and that's it. Buy cash, maybe the car needs a little work. Maybe you got a friend of the family that's a mechanic that can work on cars. Maybe you yourself, you can work on cars a little handy. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you should learn to work on cars if you're a guy, learn, learn to do things like brakes, oil changes. You know, tie rod ends, struts, things like that, basic mechanic stuff, light, light duty mechanic stuff. And get you a car that you don't have to have a note for. If you are planning to own property in the near future or to invest your money. The reason why I say this is because car notes, first of all, cars themselves are depreciating assets. When you say depreciating asset, you mean they're an asset or something that you acquire that does not bring you value or it doesn't increase in value itself. It decreases. They say as soon as you drive a car off the lot, a brand new car off the lot, it has you've just lost $10,000 on a vehicle. So if you buy a 2019 uh, C-Class Benz, and you pay $40,000 for it. The moment you leave the lot and you come back with the car tomorrow or the next day or next week, the car is now worth about five to $10,000 less than what you bought it for, even though you probably put, what, a couple miles on it? So that's a depreciating asset. What you wanna take loans out for or invest your money in is appreciating assets. Assets that increase in value over time, which would be real estate, you know, properties, um, maybe stocks and bonds. Um, I can't really talk to you about stocks and bonds like that because I'm not too well versed in that. As of yet, I'm learning. So I don't want to give you any wrong information because I'm, I myself is still learning. But uh, let's stick with real estate, properties. When you obtain a property, usually, generally, depending on the, the area or whatever, a property increases, even if it's a small amount of increase, it increases over time. So you get you a property, you invest a little money into it, whether it be, um, whether it be uh, renovations, anything like that, you invest a little money into it, and over time the property is gonna increase. It's gonna increase in value. So that's where you wanna invest your money. That's where you wanna put your money. So this is why I say, if you can, if you can help it, Stay away from car notes. And like I said, myself, I have a car note now, and I've had car notes in the past. They're not a bad thing, but you don't want to invest too much of your money into a car note. Now, a lot of financial gurus that you watch on YouTube will say, pay cash, save up 15 grand and pay cash. 
Now I know I'm a small, I'm a small fish in a big pond. I'm just starting out, but I say, um, if you don't own a home yet, or if you don't own real estate or properties yet, I would never say pay fifteen thousand dollars cash for a car, and you're still living with your mother, or you live in a basement apartment somewhere, or you live in a studio apartment. I would never say that. That fifteen thousand dollars you can use to get you a roof over your head, or get you an income property, a rental. Only way I'd say to save up all that money, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and just put it all down on a car is if you're very established financially. You maybe you already own your property. Maybe you own several real estate properties. You know you got your regular nine to five job, nine to five job. Plus you have your plus you have your residual income coming in from those properties. Now you're in a position where you can drop 15 to 20 grand on a car and maybe not really feel a bite. But to be living in an apartment somewhere or to be a college kid going through school, to have $10,000 saved up and some financial guru says, oh, buy a car cash with the 10,000. To me, that's just stupid. You're gonna waste all of that money on a depreciating asset. I would never do that. Or I would never tell somebody to do that. What I would tell you to do is maybe Buy your car that's cash, yeah, that can help get you through which you know what you needed to. But your main goal at the end of the day should be to acquire assets that increase in value. Like I said, which is real estate. There's more, but you know, I'm just really sticking to, to real estate right now. So put your money, you know, towards that. Now, of course, like I said before, if you're a college kid going through college, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't have a job yet. You don't. You're not gonna have the, the means or the funds to just put towards a, you know, put towards a house. Yeah, you gotta wait till you get your regular nine to five job. But if you're a college kid and you have 10, 12 grand saved, I never say. I would never say use that 10, 12 grand and buy you a car. You know what I'm saying? No way. Like you save that money. Use that money as a cushion, man. Maybe get you a little cheap hoopty. I, the, the vehicle that I'm driving right now, man, I pay like maybe nine hundred dollars for a thousand dollars for it. And you know, I did a little work to it. Which, you know, unfortunately I filmed the work that I did to the car before I had my channel up and running so I can't really show you. But now, you know, it's, 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 it's running it's running fairly fairly decent. I don't want to say it's running great, but it's running fairly decent. So there are cars out there that you can probably roll the windows down a little high. There are cars out here that you can probably find and buy that can give you a good two, three, four years out of it before you have to make any, any you know, maybe even switch it. So that's why, you know, I say do that, but hold on to your money. Don't invest too much in vehicles. I've done that a lot in my day. I'll be honest with you, I have a a, a, a car right now that, or you said my SUV is a lease, but I paid maybe a little over $500 a month for it, a month. Now I was a little younger when I bought the car and I didn't, I didn't own a home when I bought it. I was, you know, still kind of like, you know, living in an apartment and, you know, just like whatever with my money. So I agreed to the note, which now is kicking me in the butt. You know what I'm saying? Because paying $500 a month on a four year lease was a horrible deal. Horrible. And I, I, I'm saying it myself because I don't want nobody to put in the comments, oh, that was a horrible deal, man. I, it was a horrible deal. I know it was a horrible deal. I shouldn't have did it, but I did it because I was young and impulsive. And now I got so much money wrapped up into a vehicle. That money I could be using to put towards maybe buying a second home, buying a rental property, something like that. Investing it somewhere. So especially if you're young, I know more older established people, you're more established financially, so you can afford to, you know, maybe take on a car note. But if you're young and you're trying to acquire assets at a young age, do try to if you're best to stay away from car notes. Now I'm not saying you can't get a great deal. Like some car companies will give you a great deal and be like, okay, you can get the car with this amount of down and your note would only be 150 bucks a month. Something like that. Yeah, if you come by something like that, of course, maybe your dad's a car dealer, your uncle gives you a great deal, whatever. But for the general speaking young person, man, a note 350, 450, 500, stay away from those. Stay away from it, save your money, try to pump your money into assets like real estate. Hold on to it. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, if you have 10, 15 grand in your account and you gotta buy a car, use the 15 grand and pay for the car cash. Never do that. Try to keep your debts and your credit cards old. That'll be another video. But for right now, what I'm talking about is putting your money into assets. Stay away from car notes. Listen to me. I've had a lot of them and none of them have ever 
bought me any income or have really, really even helped me in my entire life. My last car note that I have now is my lease that will be going back, I think, sometime next summer. I think I got maybe like 10 months on it, whatever that equates to. That'll be going back. And when it does go back, believe me, I'm going to be trying my best to either stay away from car notes altogether or not take a car note that's more than maybe 150 to 200 bucks, man. And for me, for my salary, for my income, what I make, I can pay that like nothing. That's that's not, you know, that's something I won't even think about. $500, I pay it, but eh, it's a little annoying. It's like a, a gnat, a mosquito that flies around at you go like this. That's kind of how it is to me. It's very annoying, but you know, I still make it do with it. So please do that. If you don't have a, a set income yet, Stay away from car notes altogether. Don't even think about getting a car. Just ride a hoopty out. If you do have a little income, get a car note that you can pay without even thinking about, that you're not worried about. You know you can make that payment every month with no issues, without stressing all your other bills. This is just financial advice for me. Uh, hopefully, in my next financial video, I'll talk about debt, how to keep your debt low, things like that. And um, yeah, man, I'm here to help you guys out any way I can, especially for my younger people, my younger generation out there, man. Hopefully, y'all watch the channel for my financial advice that I can give to you guys, and you guys take it and use it. Any comments that you guys, any information you want to know, you want to ask about purchasing homes, things like that. I'm now trying to work on getting my second home, so stay tuned for some, some vlogs and videos about that stuff, man. But like I said, I'll let you guys go, man. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to hear some more financial videos. If you're here for the cars, don't worry, we got plenty of that coming. And I'll let you guys have a good day. You know, uh, subscribe if you can, man. You guys enjoy your day. Peace.